Hey guys, it's Danny. Alrighty, since 99% of my Orchid collection is on potted at the moment, I thought it would be a nice idea to actually take a look at their roots because we don't see them every day. So I'm going to show you today the orchids that have fuzzy roots. Now most orchid roots look like this. They're kind of white or silvery, they have green growing tips, and they're not really fuzzy. However, there are some orchids which look totally different. So let's start with the most common of all, the Paphiopetalum orchid. So let's take a look at the roots. Here we have the root system of a Paphiopetalum, and I think you can observe this, the roots are very, very fuzzy. Not only are they fuzzy, but they're not actually white, they are brown. This is very normal for, I think, all Paphiopetalum orchids. Keep in mind, these orchids are not epiphytes, they are terrestrial or semi-terrestrial, so they will never have aerial roots. However, their roots look very very fuzzy as you can see they actually cling to their soil pretty well because of this fuzz and also they are not green or white they are brown and when they grow they usually have yellow growing tips and not green another orchid with fuzzy roots although not as fuzzy as the paphiopetalum is the selogeny cristata that i have here so let's take a look at her roots as you can see again they are brown and the growing root tips i'll give you a close-up are slightly yellow, slightly green, but the roots themselves are very, very fuzzy, very attachable, and also brown. Now, this orchid is an epiphyte, unlike the Paphiopetalum orchid, but still, the roots are quite fuzzy on it, so if yours looks like this, don't worry about it. The thing that I've noticed though, if the roots do get outside of the media, they grow into the air, they stop being fuzzy, and I'll show you a better example of that. Here is the Kaisis brectensis orchid that I have. He's still potted because he's very heavy and very unruly, but he will be unpotted prior to me leaving with a day or something. So let's take a look at the roots. Here we go, we have another set of very fuzzy and very cute roots. However, the roots that grow into the air and try to cling to stuff are not fuzzy at all. They look more like Calia roots rather than anything else. However, inside the pot and in the media, all the roots are very fuzzy and again, kind of brownish, not all that brown because they do photosynthesize, but they are very, very fuzzy. Going back to Selogenes, here is my Selogeny Usitana. And excuse the messed up new growth here, but her roots are again pretty fuzzy. Not as fuzzy as the ones that I showed you prior to this orchid, but look at them. They do have that fuzz and again, they tend to cling to stuff very, very well. This orchid did not create any aerial roots for me. Most of them, or all of them, actually went into the media. But the roots which grew inside the media, you can see they are pretty fuzzy, and for this reason, it's kind of hard to detach the sphagnum moss from them. I'll eventually need to detach all of it, but I will need to do this carefully because those hairs can be pulled off. And another orchid which has fuzzy roots, not as fuzzy as the other ones, but still pretty pretty fuzzy, is the Bulbophyllum. This is the Elizabeth and Buckleberry. Let me try to give you a close-up of some fuzziness going on here. So it's not super fuzzy, but they do have some hairs here and there. Makes them very attachable once again. And again, it's pretty hard to remove the sphagnum moss from the roots. Here is a good example. Hopefully I can focus on this particular root. I think you can see it better now. It does have some fuzz, and actually it's not the only one which has a little bit of a fuzz. Most bulbophyllums do have quite a bit of fuzzy roots. Now here's the funny thing, even though the orchids that I just showed you are not really related between them, moreover this is a terrestrial orchid and the other ones were epiphytes, they do have one thing in common. They really do not like to dry out in between waterings, they would much rather prefer to be moist all of the time. Even the Selogeny cristata, if you search articles, they suggest you do give a dry winter rest, however my particular one absolutely hated being dry, she would have much rather been moist. So the fact that they do have these hairs might mean that in their natural habitat they do experience more moist conditions in regards to other epiphytes. And from what I discovered, all of these orchids that I just showed you absolutely hate drying out. The Bulbophyllums in particular, the Chysis in particular, absolutely hate. Not to mention the Paphiopetalum does not grow aerial roots, he's a terrestrial orchid. 
So I can draw a little bit of a conclusion here. Whatever orchid might have fuzzy roots might actually prefer to stay more moist rather than dry. And the hairs on the roots might actually be created to be better at absorbing and keeping in the water. This is just a guess though. It's what I observed from my orchids and I just wanted to show you which orchids have fuzzy roots, how the roots look like, and tell you that they all have this trait in common. They absolutely hate drying up in between waterings. Okay guys, I hope you found this interesting. Let me know in the comments below if you have orchids which have fuzzy roots. Apart from the ones that I showed you, are there any other orchids which have these cute fuzzy roots? Alrighty, so if you like to see more orchid videos from me and stay up to date with everything, simply subscribe to my channel, I post on a daily basis. Also, feel free to leave me comments or suggestions in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. If you click on the left side of your screen, you'll be directed to orchinature.com, where you'll find care sheets, identification sheets, and also you can talk to us in the forum section. And on the right side of your screen, you can click to watch another orchid video. Thanks for joining, I'll see you next time, bye!